Ephesians chapter 3 and then verse 20. And then we'll do Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. The first verse is what? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. We began a journey last year talking about the supernatural. And we have seen the supernatural work in our life. Amen. Uh, during resurgence, and that's why it's important to attend programs. During resurgence, a lady whose, um, father, whose mother-in-law, she wasn't married, her fiance's mother was already was kidnapped when she, she came for um, resurgence. And while twice praying here, believe that it had happened. Believe that happened, that God has said to them. And today, on Tuesday exactly, the woman was released by the kidnappers without paying one naira. That can only be God. Uh, when they kidnap in Nigeria, I hope you know they are not joking. Uh -huh. The money you don't have, they will get it from you. Right? Without paying a penny, she was released. Another person, why we are here? You know, there are testimonies. We just don't share it enough. Why we are here? Receive a message of a 30% salary increase. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, why is praying? The email dropped. She, he didn't check the mail there, yeah, like some of you. Right? Uh, but, but when she, she saw, you see, when the Lord is in a place, it's not by numbers. It's not by numbers. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. And I tell you, God is here. This kind of miracles don't happen by, by just thinking it. It can only validly be by God. Amen. Amen. Now, that's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Are you there now? The Bible says, now to him. That word him there is the word in capital which talks about not me, not you. talks about God. Now to God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Can I ask you, what do you think? What is your imagination? What's your expectation for 2024? This is the first Sunday of the year. What's your expectation for this year? Right? Some people are not in church because they are not back from holidays. I don't know what kind of job some people do that they resume maybe eight. It's a very good job. If I have it, I would like it. But the call of God means I'm always on duty. Amen. But look at, look at that. The scripture says to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Some of you right there are thinking, I need a change of job. God is saying by the end of 2024, my idea is that you are already employing people. You see, so what can you think? What, what is your imagination? And God says he's able to do exceedingly and far above that. Can we see Isaiah chapter 8 and then verse 18 very quickly? Isaiah 8, 18. Very important portion of scriptures. The Bible says, Here am I, and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of Augusta. He tells you something. He says, Here am I with the children the Lord has given me. He tells you that in the family of God, there is a remarkable proof that must be there. Signs and wonders. When you see a family of God, what you must see there should be signs and wonders. It's not church the God way when there are no miracles. It's not church the God way where there are no signs and wonders. Because that's not the pattern we find in the Holy Church. In the Holy Church, in the book of Acts, what you find in Acts is the act of the Holy Spirit that causes the church to so much explode. Why? Because there were signs and wonders following. One of the things I want to do today is to increase your expectation for signs and wonders. That you do not only live by your salary, but you live by God's idea. That you not only live by the drugs, but you live by divine health. I don't know if there's anybody here who is sick in their body. Have come to say that God heals you today. Not tomorrow, today. today. I just have to say it. I always say it smiling. I don't have to break my head so that you can know his prophecy. So that you can know God is here. But as we sojourn together, you will begin to see more signs of the miraculous that will prove to you more than my voice. That Bobo is in tone so is true. Are you following what I'm saying? So that's the truth. We are for signs and wonders. So help me look at him and shake that guy, shake that lady, and say, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. With my family. And we are for signs and wonders. In 2024, I am marked with signs and wonders. Look at that and smile. Let him know you are not joking. Signs and wonders. Say it again. I say signs and wonders. Today for a few minutes I want to share with you what I try to do. Releasing the supernatural. Look at your neighbor and say releasing the supernatural. 
Father, thank you because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding to us as simple people. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a red writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Somebody came into this hall, into this meeting, and you came with an infection in your tracts. Like you need to tract infection. It's an infection. You don't know how you got it. But it's crazy. You've used drugs. It's refused to go. God just healed you now. Just right now. Just right now. Just right now. The flow ceases right now. That dirty, smelling flow stops right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're sick anywhere in your body, I want you to just put your hands there. Just put your hand there. Why I help me sing? It flows, it flows. It flows, it flows. The, the virtue of Jesus. It flows, it flows. If you are online, the measure it of the flows, anointing it flows. Right Wherever you are, it flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus. It flows. infirmities upon the cross and by your stripes you are healed. I cause every root of barrenness right now. I cause every root of barrenness right now. Every heart disease every spirit of ulcer damage done to your stomach I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Your spirit of infirmity lose them. Let them go right now. In the name of Jesus, online, on site, the tangible power of the Lord flows right now. It flows right now. It flows right now. The tangible power of God. The tangible power of God. You came with any ache. You came with any ache. It might be back, stomach ache. You can check it if you look at that. If it might be your left, I want you can jump. You can, you can just try and check it out. It's no longer there. No longer there. No longer there. You have a high thing. You want the Lord to heal your eyes right now. But you can just put your hands on it. The virtue of Jesus is flowing right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen such a glory right now so I just want to say what I want to say that I thought I was going to say in an hour I'll try and say it in 30 40 minutes and I believe that God's anointing will be there tangible enough to transform your life listen to what I want to say very closely and I might get to a point I will show you a practical um, to let you see how the power flows but the idea of this is so that after now, after now, you can see that you can step into the supernatural. I want to open a veil to you this morning that will allow you to step into the supernatural. Before I start, there is something I want you to understand. that The question is not, how do I get supernatural power from God? That's not the question. I've answered that question last week. The question is, what type of person do I need to become in order that God can clothe me with his power. Many times our issue is not acting or doing. It is in becoming. If we can become the people that God can trust with his power, then God's power will flow through us. If you are going to learn to walk in the supernatural, then you will need to learn to walk hand in hand with God. God, you can't walk with God being on a contract staff basis with God. You can only work with God on a permanent basis. God is not the ATM machine you go to when you need help. Don't wake up in the morning and go kiss an ATM machine. 
There is no love with you and your ATM machine. When your mom raises a chicken and comes home by 5 p.m. and says, you did not feed the chicken since morning. And she's very angry. She's not the love for the chicken. It's not that the chicken can be big enough to be killed. It's such a selfish love. If the love you have for God is a love of receiving from him, then it's such a selfish love. It's about becoming a people God can trust. And I found out that how God can trust you is how much you love him. How much like him you want to become. How much he can trust you with his power. The power of God is given by him. It's not something we earn or manipulate with a formula. So if you have come here and said, this is supernatural, I'm going to receive a formula. I'm sorry. This is not physics class. It is something we learn to walk in as we learn to walk with him. But it isn't the power of the Lord. What, I, what do I mean? I mean, how can I be impacted even with supernatural power so that I can impart other people? As we are progressing our journey to the supernatural, one of the questions you may be asking, which is very likely that you are asking, don't be distracted this morning. One of the questions you may be asking is, can I walk in the supernatural? Can I operate in the gift of the Spirit? Can I also see evidences like BFAZ and, and his evidence now around this ministry? Do I have all I need to see the Lord move in my family? Will I see the sick healed? Will the Lord heal me also? Will I walk in signs and wonders? Listen, dear ones, you can walk in the supernatural. The spiritual is available to you and not me alone. It's available to every one of us. God is not interested in only signing off with the pastors. I know you are raised in the church uh, with that idea of when I see the priest or the prophet, my problem is solved. And yet there is a power and the tangibility of the power upon the anointed of the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, verse 4, I believe, and no one takes his honor upon himself except he that is called like Aaron was called. Right? So there is the anointing of the priest, there is the anointing of the prophet. But the Lord has called all of us priests. In Revelation, the Bible says we are all priests uh, and kings with God. Revelation chapter 1 and then verse 6. Listen, dear friends, God has called us. Even as so the, the, why would the Lord do this? Because the Lord sees that the magnitude and, of the work is not something pastors alone can do. He needs every one of us stepping into our places. I don't think you understand that there are many addicted in this country to bad substances. I don't think you understand. It. One of my pastors called me uh, yesterday as I was coming from Ibadan. And he was telling me about somebody who's quite close to him. Uh, and he said, listen, this guy, he said money is not the problem. He said, but alcohol is the problem. He said, I believe sincerely that they used it against him. He said, they just called me now that he's been on a three days drinking spree. I thought people drink at night. I didn't know that there are people who just drink. They just, he said three days. He's just been drinking. He said this is abnormal. There are people addicted to sex. There are people who are sick down and out. How many can we reach with our hands alone? Your neighbors need you to come into your places. So that because you are there, light will come in that neighborhood. Because you are there, deliverance come to people. I need you to be thirsty for the power of God. Because listen, if they are told you that you can do Christianity without power and you believe it, they lie to you. Why? Because the essence of Christianity, and we are a Bible-believing church. You cannot read the Gospels, what we call the synoptic Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then read the book of John and not see signs and wonders. Actually, throughout the scriptures, it takes, it takes the miraculous to believe that. If you don't believe in miraculous, you can't believe in the Bible. The whole of scriptures talks about the miraculous. And that's why Isaiah said, the prophetic said, he said the time is coming. He said, I and my children, we are for signs and wonders. You must understand that the signs and wonders we speak about is a company of people that works in signs and wonders. The Bible says Jesus called them, Mark chapter 3 verse 14, he called the disciples to himself that they may be with him and that he may send them out. And when he sent them out, the miraculous began to happen in their life. And that's what is recorded in the book of Acts. Miracles upon miracles. The Holy Spirit came like a sound in Acts chapter 2. 
By Acts chapter 3, they saw a man at the gate called Beautiful. How many years ago have you received the Holy Ghost? These guys received the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, they started walking in power. You've received the Holy Ghost for many years, and you've not seen a dick yield. It's time for us to begin to task for more. God has empowered us. John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus said something that is so remarkable. John 14, 12. He said, to him that believes in me, he said, these works that I do, and greater works shall they do also. Greater works. Greater works. And I read scriptures. Sir, if I can do the work Jesus did, it's enough. I'm not even saying greater works now. That I can go to somebody who will lose his only son. This is only so. And I can say, cry no more. Arise! I think that's enough. But the Bible says, greater works than this shall you do also. We've not even measured up to what he did. Not to talk of greater works. Am I speaking to you of something impossible? Scriptures make it understandable. Because it is true. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Say, it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. Do you get that now? Now, look at that. No, no, no. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. What I quoted is Romans. Now, look at that. He said, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. Now, who are the us? Answer that question. Because I want to define us in the scriptures I'm going to quote now. Who are the us? We are, we, all of us, not pastors, not bishops. He said, for everyone who is saved, this gospel is the power of God. So have the power of God. As you have the power of God, I ask as the power of God also. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus says, and you shall be witnessing after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. If therefore, how do I know that he's talking about all of us? Because it's not only pastors that receive the Holy Ghost. You also receive the Holy Ghost. So if you have the Holy Ghost, uh, then you can also be a witness. And a witness that lacks power is not an effective witness. And the Lord healed me of headache. See, so you are saying God can heal me of headache. I mean, that was what he, that was a has his pastor. You mean that God can raise the dead? They can. Because the man preached on God can raise the dead. He now went to the man. Young believer, have you ever raised the dead, sir? He said, no. He said, but the Bible is true. The pastor said, yes, but you see, you know how we explain things away. You know, <laughs> some of these things don't work that way. <laughs> the man said, don't worry. He was looking for a dead person. I told you in this church. And how he that was I saw a dead person, this person just died. He didn't know. You know, I know people can very, they can keep dead for years. That they will, and the thing will not rust. <laughs> it's not rust. Dead don't rust. <laughs> they won't decay. Did you see the video somewhere on Instagram last week? Where they pierce somebody with wood from this stage and enter from this place. And the person was going down like, in Esa, in this guy's, guy's place. In Alestam, Ishan. Like, you're, you're from Mauchi. It's your neighbor. Edo people. <laughs> you're from Ishan, be? But you saw the video. Ah. I think it was a masquerade thing they were doing. And a, the stick. You know, some of you say you don't believe in the supernatural stick like this, like a rod. They put it on somebody's head like this, and it came out on the other side. And you see blood, and the person was walking. And they were all following the person. Two of them, it wasn't one. You see if it's one, you say it's fake. You saw the video. Two. Supernatural. You know what it means to pierce you and come out this way? They were suspending the person. I know people fear them. Or fear Yoruba people more because I'm Yoruba. You have to, because the supernatural is real. Listen, that person they are afraid of in your village that your mom is talking about, and you're saying, no, no, they know what they're afraid of. It is this kind of proof that you see. That kind of guy now, now comes out of it. He says, sit down, you will not sit down. You will sit down. Why? Because it is a word of power. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I didn't say that to make you afraid. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. He says, not giving unto us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Of power of love and of a sound mind. Very key. Give me Acts chapter 6 verse 8. I want to show you something in Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Because I want you to know that it's all of us. All of us. All of us. All of us. The Bible says, and Stephen, 
Is Stephen one of the disciples of Jesus? Are you sure you went to Sunday school? You are sure? It's not one of the twelve. It's not, right? It's not one of the twelve. And the Bible says, and Stephen, full of faith and power. That means what you need is to be full of faith and power. The Bible says, and he was full of faith and full of power, and he did great wonders and signs. Just like Isaiah said in 8.18 of Isaiah. Among the people. And the whole city followed him. The whole city. Why? Because of signs and wonders. Power. Some of us are not promoted at the place of work. Because somebody said, if I am here, you will not be promoted. A student in the University of Ibadan was told, you see, when you go to federal schools, I've told you before, there's nothing to be proud of. I say, eh, eh, somebody finished from private school and got a good grade, you are, say, that's not a first class, that's a fake first class. You have been, tra you have been traumatized. What you go to say, you can't, you say, hey, they, they call themselves students, they call themselves students. Of course. Going to Covenant is not the same thing like going to Union Lorraine. It's not true. I finished from University of Bologna and I know what I'm talking about. Your lecturer tells you, you will not graduate. Who can you report to? Let a covenant lecturer say that. I know people will not sack him the next day. You don't say that kind of thing. But you see, you see that's what makes us grow. You need psychological. You, you, you have been traumatized. Trauma is there. Therapy. Is that what they call it now? You, you, that's what you need. Because you see, these things don't make you normal. Sometimes they make you abnormal. All your trainings, you don't have to kill a child with hunger so that the child, you You know how those Yoruba things just come around you and say, <laughs> Again, I digress. Listen, dear friends, there's a difference between the experiences. You have to understand that this world operates by power. And you need it. I started a line of thought, I didn't finish it because I can't get it back, so it's okay. It's not important. If it's important, I'll remember. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. You gave me that scripture, right? And I've, I've, I've explained that scripture to you. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, 19 to 20, the Bible begins to talk. He said, and what is the exceedingly greatness of his power towards us who believe? No, towards who? Towards who? Now, I want to answer a question. Does us include you? Are you sure? That us include you? Now, the Bible says, and what is it? Exceedingly greatness. I mean, that's Genesis 101 English. That, that, that's an adjective that describes the kind of power. And it says it is exceedingly great. So that the power that the believer carries is enough. You see, what we call apostolic power, if you walk in the fullness of the believer's power, is enough. He said the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Now, he now gave you what that power that he's talking about has done before. He said, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You see, the raising of Christ from the dead is not a miracle, according to man's definition. Because for someone to rise from the dead, somebody has to call him forth. Even what you call a miracle. Okay, so somebody had died, they now call a big man of God. And he comes in and says, Ah, oh Lord, no, we refuse it. Dada, stand up! Now that will call a miracle. Because Dada stood up. Somebody brought the person up. But the scripture says there is a power that invokes himself without being called. There is an invoking of the power when I say, Dada, stand up! I invoke that power by releasing that statement. It is the word combined with power that makes him stand. But the power that raised the Christ from the dead was not invoked by any man. The Bible says that same power works in you. The Bible says it will quicken. Him. That's Romans chapter 8. You can look for it. It says that same power works in you. It will quicken your mortal bodies. That's 8 9. It will quicken your mortal bodies. And the Bible says this same power that raised him from the dead is. Okay, you want to get that. But in the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. That means there are healings that takes place on a daily basis in your life that you don't even know. And you know that's why you sleep and you say, this place is pain in me. And you felt the pain, acute. But you woke up and there's no acute pain anymore. The power that raised Christ from the dead. It wasn't invoked or provoked. It's because you are just a partaker of the divine nature. Somebody understand what I'm saying? When the supernatural becomes your living reality every day. The power. And that power is for us all. Stop thinking that pastors are the only ones who need power. 
your child will be sick one day. And you will see that it's too late to get to the hospital. You beat the child and say, life returns to you now. Life will come. Pastors are even very wicked to call now. They are on DND. Do not disturb. You call, the thing will be dropping. Drop. And it can even be on a call to another place. So you are waiting. He doesn't know it's an emergency. That's why you need the power for yourself now. So that when I'm unreachable, you can reach God. Uh, Only God has the capacity to take 400 million calls at the same time. You need God tech, not physical tech. MTN can mess you up in trouble. But there is a spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He dwells on me. He dwells on my inside. And that is a quickening ability. Nothing dies in my hand. Nothing dies. You see, randomly, I will tell you today how you can provoke sign dy- dynamics. You just declare, nothing dies in my hand. Somebody say, but consent, don't make us say lower. I just felt like saying that. One of the prayers I've prayed most in my life, I don't mean I knelt down and pray. I have never remembered myself kneeling down and praying it. Is that I shall never be stranded in life. My wife can complete it. I can wake up now and say, I shall never be stranded in life. I can be driving. I shall never be stranded. If they had made stagnation for me in two months' time, I've declared it now. Something will change. Something will change. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I think I've broke folks out in things in you. You want to see healings. You want to see joy. I am too far gone with God to be depressed. Too far gone with God to be depressed. Yesterday night, we began to reminisce with some people in our house. How a particular year in our life brought so much trouble. Brought so much trouble. In that year, my wife was um, pregnant. But that's not trouble. Twins. But that's not trouble, too. It's a double blessing. So you want to know what trouble is? Under our watch, somebody committed fraud in a financial institution. Under our watch. Not much. For Lagos people, not much. But when you're learning there, three million was a big money. And that was, that was not... That year, with three million, you should buy two Camry cars. Now you can't get one. It's Nigeria use that his life has gone. <laughs> that same year, after the children's birth, I fell, died, and resurrected. If you have read my book, you will see the story there. That same year. That same year. That same year, we had been keeping our money, saving, no long time saving, in a holdings coming or what to call it, an institution. And we kept paying every month. And when our money was done, for five years, we were saving in that place, run by a pastor, a fraudulent pastor. <laughs> so when people say they have things against pastors, even pastors have things against pastors. What are you telling me? <laughs> run by a pastor. We wrote to him and said, it's now five years, can we get our money back? And he said, no, the company has had issues for two years, and you are collecting our money every month. <laughs> Till he was there. so for two, you couldn't have it's integrity. Even if you had invested badly, you could have written us and say, you know what? Stop paying the money in. We have issue. But you collected till till when we, if we had four more years, if I done a ten years plan, it would have been collected for ten years. That same year, I remember I went to a church and they were playing bass guitar. It wasn't Sandy. Where I said by next month I'll buy you the bass guitar. I was depending on the one. <laughs> The Lord must have been smiling at me. <laughs> the most master. I'm, so, so I'm trying to say to you that that same year, boy, you know what? If you have seen me that year, I was laying hands. I was happy like happy can be. If I was in, even when I was sick, somebody saw me on the sick bed, a pastor, and went outside crying. And me that they were crying for, I knew I would stand up. I am too far gone with God to be depressed. You can't have the source of joy. The Bible says with him is the fountain of life. And in his life do we find light. I can't be joined to this fountain and have problem. And I do scriptures. The Bible says rejoice. Again, I say to you, rejoice. 
When I say you rejoice, nobody rejoices more than me in this church. I'm jumping. Because I understand it's a biblical injunction. You take yourself too seriously, that's why you are depressed. But I take God seriously, that's why I have joy. Joy. It's not a song. It's a living reality. There might be... I need Jesus slept in the storm. Somebody said, for Jesus calm the storm. No, sir. He didn't plan to calm the storm. He planned to sleep through the storm. To sleep through the storm. That was his original plan. It was disciples that went and woke him up. Can't you see we are drowning? But, but it's, so it's not the storm. It's you. It's not what you are going through. It's what you are made of. The same sun that makes the candle solidifies the clay. The same. 2024, you must be stronger than your enemies. Nothing they do in your office should make you sad. You know when your boss abuses you and says rubbish to you, the next day he expects you to come in looking sad or morose. Come back there and start smiling. Mr. Tayo, how are you doing? I hope you slept well. He's thinking she's going to Yes! In can she me, you don't know. You've got to confuse the enemy. No, don't grieve. Even the devil listeners don't grieve for anything. 2024, don't grieve. What, the, what is it? People, the devil will bring people into your life to frustrate your faith and frustrate your life. But when they see that no matter what we do, this girl is still hugging us, they will leave you. They will now come and be telling you what they were saying in their company. Even Aito Fell's wisdom can be frustrated. Now, you know, when he says anything in our company, is like that. Or God listens to him. Oh. Aito first was frustrated. He was so frustrated, he killed himself afterwards. Your inheritance is in God. Let me quickly show you. How do I release the supernatural? I think what I've given you is full already. But Moabi, your honorarium will be high. Praise God. Number one. How do I get the supernatural? How do I release the supernatural? You must have deep desire and hunger for God's power. There must be a desire to walk in the supernatural. People don't just mistakenly enter into the supernatural. You must desire it. Desire that nobody falls sick in my family this year. Nobody. Nobody. The amount of money you spend, if not for HMO, you would have been in debt. Stop it. This year, nothing dies in my This year, desire the supernatural. In the supernatural, you don't get there by mistake. You will never enter to something you do not deeply desire. Desire is the access key into the supernatural. It's how you constantly experience something is to desire it. You know, Jesus said it, Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever you desire when you pray. The reason your prayer is not answered is because your prayer is not first started by desire. People are too quick to pray in a generation. That's why I wonder how you people do that prayer of joining every prayer money, money, prayer, every money. You don't even understand what they're praying about, and you're just there. Bible says, what things soever you desire. When you call now and say, the Lord say it's increasing everybody this year. Increase, and you look at yourself, you don't even have desire for increase. And what they, first of all, desire. If you can, say, what things soever you desire. When you pray, so desire must come before prayers. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Desire before prayer. When you desire it and then you pray, you will quickly find results. Lord, give me a wife. Lord, give me a wife. That's how I many of you are single at 38. When will you start getting children? The Bible says, Satisfy me, Elio God. What is that? I want to be a grandpa at 52. My daughter should get married very fast. I'm not interested. Whether you like it, on Twitter is your problem. Get married very fast. Amen. Some of you, if you don't take care, at the end they will get married before you are done. <laughs> no, it's not far. Because when I say she will quickly get married, I'm talking about 14 years from now. It is not so that I've met people. Now you are 31. The way you are making decisions, no desire at all. That crossover year, I will never forget. Never forget. I stepped on the gallery, ran in my chapel. 
international churches on the gallery on that crossover night. And people were praying. My first prayer point was, God, I found my wife this year. Uh, and when I pray, I don't pray the way you pray. I pray. You see, there is a prayer that you know is battered by desire. That's why you are sleeping off while praying. It's not battered by desire. It's not coming from the place of pain. If it's a pain point, you pray differently. Oh, that miracle testimony they give. When I came to this church on this at resurgence and I said, write your prayer point down. She mentioned. CPFA said, the Lord has said. Her prayer point down. You know that this, our first prayer point, she didn't know this. I've read all the, some of the prayer points. Our first prayer point was, Lord, heal Aiden. That's what she put there. Desire. If I ask you what do you want, now you are still thinking about it. Ask me, try me, try me. I can give you seven immediately. I'm very alert. What's to have you desire? And I prayed. Oh, I prayed that day. And when I was done, I moved to the next one. I moved to the next one. Little wonder that month, I was going for a wedding. And the Lord, and I hear the Lord say to me, Today you will meet your wife. Today you will meet your wife. It didn't happen because of a constance. You see, you can have your, the best lady around you, but because you don't know, you, you have friends zoned your life help. Problem. is in Lagos you find men, 39, 42. He said, go stop in Lagos, and we will come there and marry under their roof. People say, pastors are married. I tell people that if the Lord permits pastors to marry 20 wives, you will discover that. The one you say there's no girl, there's no girl there, there's no would have been marrying them inside your face like that. And you say, ah, what to be? You know, you know they were okay. But if you are not married, ah, you would have done nothing. You have done nothing. You just call people, you just send messages, foolish test messages. The girl is motion is so high. You think the girl is on codeine permanently. He's calling me, he's calling me again, but he doesn't know what he wants. When you seek for a miracle, not for yourself, but for others, as much as you want your next breath, then you are ready. You know the guys who brought their friends to Jesus? They came late. Like she always come late. Under your roof, she has collected miracles. <laughs> Under your roof, they came late. How do I know they came late? The Bible said the whole place was filled up. And the Bible said they removed the roof. Desire. If it was just Eja Loli, they would do another one next month. The desire. Cut the roof off. Because nothing is impossible to desire. There is nothing as dogged as desire. Impossibility bow at desire. They opened it, they got their miracle. Late commerce got their miracle. All those guys who are full in that place, what happened to them? Nothing. Listen, dear friends. We all need those kind of crazy friends. That will drop you in the, in the front of Jesus. Drop you in the midst of the Christ. Desire is the means to button the miraculous. 107, 9 Psalms. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. The desire of the righteous, they are good. How much younger for signs and wonders? I didn't just step into the miraculous. I desired it. More than food. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. The spirit of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. Oh, I long for the Holy Ghost. I fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I fasted six months. What was I looking for? No prayer point. Holy Spirit just come. Six months. Holy Spirit just come. My family, I, I tell them, I say, the problem you have is yeah, this one. Because when I see them, they are eating healthy. They are, you know, I don't know how people do it. They serve you food. I went home. They were serving me food. I was never full. I was wondering what was going on. You know, all of them are on diet. They just be serving small, small food to you. And they say protein, uh, carbohydrate, this. And then before you know it, they are eating cucumber, eating all of this. I wonder, how do you leave this thing? I said, I have a solution for you. Faith and, and fasting. You fast three times a week. All this weight, you don't drop. You see, it gone now. You say, my way is tough. I say, ah. So, so serve me food. Because when I eat, I eat. When I fast, I fast. Serve me food. Melo Lion, how many years will you use here? You cut it. 
I saw them on the dining. They were talking about calories. I said, what's wrong with this? Calories. If you fast three days, you would have lost all the calories. I eat pizza. I eat everything. Because the times I fast are more than the times I eat. So what's calorie? Me that I'm looking for it. Desire. You need a new job. Desire. Desire. So there's no job in Lagos. How many applications have you done last month? Did you do last year? In total, 10. You are not a serious person. You should be doing 50 50 in a month on LinkedIn. They will get back to you. No matter how daft you are, people will get back to you. Seriousness. Seriousness. 2024. No grief for laziness. Dress better. Desire a man. You can't be dressing anyhow. You're not using perfume. You desire a man. Oh, God. Men are moved by what they see. These things are in scriptures. These things are in scriptures. Somewhere, okay. You see, these things, we don't see it enough. We are just faking it. Oh, God, dress well. Woman of God, if you want to dress well, smell well, smell good. Not all you. I'm sitting inside and wondering, ah, can you share the Somebody say, ah, pastor, that's, those pastors make them canal. Okay, I'll give you scriptures. The Bible says concerning Samuel. Samuel said, oh, the anointed of the Lord is before me. God said, even the prophet was moved by what he saw. God said, ah, you look at the outward. God was telling the prophet. He said, I am moved by what I see on the inside. Man is moved. He said, because I do not see the way man sees. He said, man looks on the outward. And I look on the inside. Before they know that you're a meek and quiet woman, they first of all get you. If four shops are here, and they're selling the same thing. Do you think that what I say is why people come sometimes? Despite the staircase, even me, I climbed that staircase there and I was telling my wife, this is wrong. So imagine there was no AC in this place. He said, no, but I'm a shoe window. They won't come. Would you? They won't come. What is important is that if you have four shops and somebody, you see, the, you enter the shop, say, selling the same thing. Coke, do. How are you, sir? How's everything? How you see everything? Not the one that they smell, everything is smelling. She's changing pampas. The smell is coming out. It's not the devil. I won't come again. Outward. I'll share with you how you can quickly get married. Be steered number two for, with compassion. I'll move very fast now. Because I can keep you permanently. And you won't know. What do you feel? What sears your soul? What touch? Are you touched by the infirmities of others? Are you done to prayers by what you see? What says the voice of compassion? The more compassionate we are, the more open we become of the miraculous. Compassion is the seed you sow for the miraculous. Give me 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Listen, you will not walk in the power of God except you walk in compassion. Most of the miracles of Christ came from the place of compassion. Finally, all of you, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8, be of one mind. Having compassion for one another. Compassion is not a ya. Yeah. That's the Yoruba way of saying it. Compassion is I see you where you are. I feel your pain and I will do whatever I can to ease it. Compassion. Miracles happen in scriptures because of compassion. The Bible says in Luke chapter 7 verse 13, Jesus had compassion on the widow of, the, of Nain. 15.32, Jesus had compassion of Matthew. Jesus had compassion on the multitude. Matthew 9.36, the Bible says, Jesus had compassion on the multitude because they were distressed and dispirited. The Bible says, he fed them spiritual nourishment. 14.14 14 of Matthew. Matthew 14.14, 14, the Bible says, because of compassion, he healed the sick and he taught them. Matthew 20. 29 to 34, two men who are blind saw him. They gained their sight. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Compassion. I found out that compassion will unlock for you what you also cannot get. If I have compassion on somebody, somebody will also have compassion on me. See, seven Galatians, God is not more. Whatsoever a man sows, he reaps. If I sow mercy, I reap mercy. If I saw compassion, I read compassion. <laughs> God. 
Listen, the world is not concerned with what you know. They are concerned with how much you care. I remember a story. I was in the lorry. And um, I was a deliverance minister. I'm still a deliverance minister. I cast out devils. And I used to say I cast out devils. I cast out devils. And I remember that day. I've never seen that before. The more we tell the demon to go, the more the demon stayed. I've never seen that before. Very, very stubborn demon. And uh, there was no talk we did not do. So we joined our hands together, put the demon possessed in the middle. What that does is that it doesn't send devils away. You see, when you pray in tongues, because you don't understand spiritual warfare, when you, do, when you pray in tongues, praying in tongues does not cast out devils. It doesn't, because they can't hear you. It torments them. He who prays in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. For no one understands what he seeks. But in the spirit, he renders mysteries. You are speaking only to God. No man understands, no being understands what you say. Demons don't. They are just afraid and trepidating, but they are confused. They don't know what to do. Therefore, you must give command in your language, or whatever language, so that they can understand Prayed in tongues to weaken that devil. That devil did not go. He was not weakened. He became more stubborn. And I remember that day. Some of us, and you know, when you do deliverance, sometimes two minutes is gone. Sometimes two hours. When we had gotten to like two hours, some of us were already standing by the wall and looking at that demon possessed as she was just rolling on the floor manifesting and all of that. And we didn't want to say, it has gone. You know how you just close on. It has gone. Let's go has gone. <laughs> By faith, that's gone. We know it didn't go. So one young lady, now we trained her. One young lady went and knelt down with that lady, demon-possessed lady. And she just started crying. Jesus, it is this in the Bible. Look at how my afflicted you are. And those of her were. But as she began to cry, it was like a glory realm came down. And suddenly, she said, Jesus do it. You devil, go now. And she made a shout and stopped. That day I learned that there are doors only compassion will open for you. There are prayers that only empathy will open for you. Captain Kuman, that great woman of God, will go behind our crusades every day before she comes on stage. They don't even pray in tongues. And she will go and be, keep walking and say, Lord Jesus, you will heal these people. They came to see me, but they don't know it's you. You alone can do it. You alone, please, Lord. And she will break down and be crying. Crying for people who have broken legs, which are problem, issues. What will make her do that? Compassion. Do you have compassion? Number three, you want to walk in the supernatural, release your faith. By releasing your faith, you are acting in faith. The way to release the supernatural is to step out in faith. To release your faith, you will do three things. Number one, you must believe the word of God. Number two, you must speak the word. And then number three, you must act on the word. Somebody say, how do I release my faith? Number one, believe what God has said. Faith comes by hearing and hearing about the word of God, 10, 17 Romans. Number two, speak the word. You release your faith by the words that you speak. We also have in the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore have we spoken. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And then what do you do again? You act on the word. The third part of releasing your faith is acting upon what God has said. When you act on it, then you are ready. Number four, I'm going fast now. How do I release the supernatural? Uh, by the prophetic revelation. By the prophetic revelation and knowledge of the will of God. Yeah. Prophetic revelation and knowledge of the will of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. When I found that scripture, it changed my life. And I stopped praying certain prayers. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. The Bible says, and God works all things after the counsel of his own will. Did you get that? Look at your help me quote that scripture. That God works all things. That's the B part. According to the counsel of his own will. 
That means that no matter how much you pray, if it's not the will of God, it won't be done. So what I found out first in prayers is it the will of God. People accuse me in this church that I only pray for two minutes when they come and meet me for things. It's because I can find out it is the will of God. If it's not the will of God, I won't pray. I'll just encourage you or give a word of wisdom to help you. The will of God. I saw aliens in scriptures and I believed it. And because I saw it and I believed it, I was healed. I went from ICU to preaching scripture to preaching sermons again. Even though they told me it might not be impossible, it might not be possible anymore. I saw miracles in scriptures and I believed it. God spoke to me about starting this church when we had ten thousand in our account, and I believed it. And the miraculous story. The Lord said. Jesus, please, I believe it. And the miraculous will follow. Dear friends, you won't see the manifestation of God's word until you believe it and release your faith towards it. God's word is never a baby. God's word is a shall. It shall happen. God's word says God heals, delivers, and does the miraculous. Please do not let anyone tell you otherwise. In this church, we have had again today a testimony of another miracle. Yet we are not going to tabernacle here. For we know there is more in God. There is more. Somebody shout, there is more. more. 320 efficiency is able to do exceedingly abundantly for above all we think of even imagine. You might be closing deals of thousands now. This year you close deals of millions and billions. Yeah. There is more. There is more. Number five, insist on the works of God. Insist on it. Some of us give up so soon. Your kind of faith is so small. If God would do it, he would have done it. No, he would do it. No greed. He would do it. I don't know who made no greed for anybody. The anthem for Nigeria this year. But whoever did it, did us a favor. No greed for anybody. Insist on it. John 14, 12 says, Greater works than this shall you also do. Insist on it. Is there someone who is ready to go do all she can? To see the works of God. In the place of prayer, you must insist on signs and wonders. Do you know that those who teach on miracles find miracles? Do you know that churches that preach on faith are people living in faith? Those who teach on financial prosperity are people prospering. Dear friends, this year insist on the supernatural works of God. Let the prayer of the early church in inspire you. Give me Acts chapter 4, 30 to 31. Insist on your new job. Insist on your healing. Insist on your promotion. Insist on help this year. Insist on that healing from us. Sir. You have not fasted all your life now because of us. Whether it is real or perceived, I don't even know. But you have to insist on it. I'm healed this year. I'm healed. Feel the pain, I'm healed. Have I told you the story of my how I got healed from us? Sir? The Bible, let's read this. Then I'll tell you that story. First, Acts chapter 4, 30 to 31. By stretching out your hand, this is the prayer of the early church, to heal that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your only servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. Look at their prayer point. They insisted. They say, stretch out your hand. Heal. Do more signs and wonders. He had just done one at the gate called Beautiful. In Acts chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. They were insisting that do more. That one that they did cost a so much can go for them. Shout. But they said, do more. Do more. We are insisting, Lord, do more. I want, I want people to get foreign jobs. Do more. Do more. Do more. So that you are kicked out of lethargy. Do more. I remember many years ago, I had Rosa. It was so bad I was doing work that I could not finish one paper because the pain came so bad. And I went to serve, um, went through school, university, and it would come once in a while and all over. I remember one day, that time that I was, I finished NYC and I went back home. And I remember I had to fast for 21 days. So what I, what I don't do is I desist from fasting for long. 
So during those periods, I was fasting, but I, I don't do long fasting because of the ulcer. And I remember it was, I think, day five or day six that this pain came. And when this pain comes, if you have ulcer, I've had it before, um, you would almost be coughed like this. I mean, you can't even bend straight. And I was like that. And at that time, the Lord had called me to ministry day one of the fasting. So I told the Lord that. So I would do, I'll be telling people you can heal, and I'll be going around with us. Can't work. You have to heal me. And I bent down like that. And I think it was day five. The pain was so terrible. I lie down in bed. The Lord said, go and pray now. I stood up, and I went to prayer. I can still remember the house we were living that time. I can remember where I was at the veranda. Just moving around praying, bent like this, with pain, crazy pain. I wasn't looking for acid. I needed healing. And you know what? The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of a lamp and the word of their testimony, not counting their life even unto death. At that time, I had zeroed it that if I died, that I wasn't going to take that drug. But I was ready to die. And I would not lie to you. Because I look at my life and said, who will cry? My parents, I don't have children, no wife, I didn't have a church, I just come back from, I came back from service, nobody really in Ibadan that knows you like that, yeah, some people hear one year later, say, yeah, it's cool, it's okay, but I wasn't ready, I, I was ready to die there, did they heal me, and I remember I was bent like this, and I was going, pacing that veranda, after I did that for like 20 minutes, and the pain was so acute, had the Lord say, if you are healed, walk like those people who are healed. Ah. But this pain is there. He said, walk like those people. True life story. You can ask my friend. And he said, I said, ah. So I said, I don't have so much faith to just stand up like because the pain was also people know I'm talking about. So I, I did, you know, also people because they have a way of they have a way of liking each other. They say, you have us, sorry. That's why we cannot fast. <laughs> so it's us people. They have like a community of, of us people. So I, 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 uh, it's an ecosystem, yes. yes. So I, I did like, and then I would rise a little. Man, as I rise, the pain will increase. But I found out that the more I rise, the more the pain will go from that level. So I began to pray. And suddenly I did like, Paka Pali, Yabashata. It's been years, babies. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not talking to you. It's been years, ladies and gentlemen. I've not had a pain for that long. Somebody say it's imagination. If it was imagination, I have fasted so much since that time that it should have come back. I don't do the kind of fasting you do that you are breaking three o'clock or six. And I do that, I do it for. And she was reporting me to my father and the Lord. Oh, my cool. I said, I wonder. That's how much I passed. He didn't come back. Listen, Daddy. You know what? I insisted on the works of God. If you are in heaven and you are there truly, I insist on it. I insist on my promotion this year. The way you talk, that's why they don't give promotion. If they give us, don't give us, we are here. No, we are not here. We are not going anywhere. This year I'm promoted. Because if you had an abalist that did it for you, you would have standed differently. Ah! Baba it so. The Baba never fails. The Baba said it. <laughs> Baba said it. Those who do it with the devil should not have more confidence than us who do it with God. And please don't come and miss me and say people are making money through jazz. They are making it through jazz. Make it through Jesus. I don't want to hear it again. Stop giving excuses. Insist on the works of God. The problem is I want to stop. But now I won't go there again. At resurgence, I came on stage and I sang a song. There shall be signs and wonders today. And some people look at me like, what does it mean? There shall be signs and wonders today. Jesus, Jesus. There shall be signs and wonders today. When you go to miracle services, you say, God will heal people today. God will do this. Why are they saying that? They are raising your expectation. Because if you don't say it, you will not see it. 
You don't have to get to miracle service to say that. From today, begin to say in your house, the money in our account never runs dry. We are never stranded. We have money. We are rich. Start saying it. Insist on the works of God. Number seven, number six now. Meditate and think deeply on the power of God. You say, how, do say how, how, how does he know that God is powerful? And in three hours, I'm just thinking about the miracles of scriptures. Three hours. How did he even meet the Nain, the woman in Nain? Imagine it's at Osapa, London. At Osapa, that petrol station, they are just bringing that person. And Jesus just met them. These in scriptures are not stories to me because I've thought of them so much that I can live it. In fact, if I am a cartoon creator, I can create them. Just spend years thinking about it. Go home today and think about the Lord that turned SS to AS. Just spend one hour and say, how did he do it? How did he do it? You don't understand the megalobin, but just think about it. A megalobin, they say a megalobin increase, a megalobin. Just, just think about how he did that. As you do that, you are actually conditioning yourself for the supernatural. So it's not by works. It's not by my effort. There is a God that backs me up. When the Lord steps in, the situation changes. I wish there was a guy here. Dr. Peace. I wish he was supposed to be in service today. Dr. Peace is a doctor. No, when I say doctor, he's a doctor, medical doctor. I was at, when I say that, you know, Nigeria now, you can't be sure. This one, I was at his um, convocation. I was there. I saw them when they gave him his certificate. So he was a doctor. He's a doctor. You know, in Nigeria, you hear that it's not a soldier later. You hear that it's not a lawyer later. So this one is a doctor. Right, so. During COVID, I've seen a lot. Miraculous, I've seen a lot. During COVID, I was driving from church and Dr. Peace called me. He's probably listening to something. Dr. Peace called me. And I, if you know him, he's a very calm person. I mean, they, they see blood so much that nothing moves them. And he was trepidating on the call. He said, my old man, my dad. And you know, you, I see Gen Z and I say, old man, old man. Me, I don't call my father old man. When you call him old man, I will die quickly. He's a young man. My father ever said, me the boy. Me the boy. And so... This guy, this fa- his father was in ICU. He had COVID. Now he had complications because he was diabetic. And he had, you know, when people, there's double pointer that the devil does to this old generation. His diabetes and BP. They have it together. And this guy had it. His father had it. So COVID now came in. So it makes it very complicated. And he said, My dad is dying. In fact, they sent me out. They want to cover him. Pastor, pray. And you know me. Two minutes prayer. I say, Father, thank you. Because you have done it. In the name of Jesus, we declare life comes to him. He said, Amen. I said, Yeah, so it's okay. We've gone. Please just started praying in tongues. I said, It's. Please say, I said, 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 I I said, and I discovered that this man was not going to let me go. So I started praying again. Two minutes with not do. He had seen that the father was really passing away. So I began, Till I got home. This guy was praying. You know what I, I said? I said, please, can you stop? He said, yes. I said, please, can you go to where your father is? He said, they won't let me enter. Because you remember those times, death was everywhere. People would wear this overall. Because he wore overall, he could even see the father dying. If not, they would just come and tell you that he's dead, though. And then you, even, you might not even see the burial because you can't, there's a protocol for burying the dead during COVID. COVID was crazy, right? And this guy, I said, wear your overall and go there. If you are going to beg them, go inside. Then he went there. I said, can I, can I pray for him? He said, he cannot even say amen again. He's, he's gone. He's going. He's going, man. He's going. So I said, call me back when you entered. The guy wore an overall back. And went there. I said, put your hand on him. Let us begin to pray. You see, there's, there's no tongues on menti, menti. You sleep off a little. Ke parato, shia parato. Two life story. If it was there, I would have told him to stand. I'll show you him next week. 
Makapoli Akuri Aditi Rupo from inside. It's not Tianfi, Tianfi, all this head when you have crown. You are saying Tiandi, Tiandi every time. Tiandi, 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 Tiandi. Somebody sick is Tiandi. Anything is Tiandi, Tiandi. You better leave Tiandi alone. I, and so I just began. I said, there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. And I'm telling you, by grace and by God, that man rose, came out. He's still in Abuja. You see, when I speak to him, he said, ah, when I told my dad that I'm in your church now, he said, my dad said, that's a good church. Of course, it's a good church. It's a good church. Why? I believe sincerely that if he had caught the phone, after that two minutes prayer, his father would have died. But that man insisted, though. He just, he just continued. I say, hey, hold on, shall me? And and the thing is, people you know are very emotional. But when you know that this guy is not emotional, why is it like this? Is what he had seen that the father was really passing away. And he insisted on it. Ladies and gentlemen, because of time, I think we should close. Eh? Okay, I mentioned it. Number seven, understand spiritual sound dynamic. What does that mean? I don't want to preach. You know, I don't preach mysteries. I want it to be very simple. If you want mystery, you listen to the other people. Yes, me, I preach simple things. What does that mean? There is no miracle that happens without a release of the sound. You must say what you want. You must declare it. You must. De- that's how to work in the supernatural. Declare healing. Say it. Declare it. Very important. And then number, finally, I say how to release the supernatural, and then I say number eight, release the supernatural. How do you release the supernatural? Release the supernatural. To release means to allow something to move, act, or flow freely. Will you let the power of God flow? Will you let the nature of God to be expressed in and through you? Will you flow with the Spirit? Don't be stiff-necked. Flow with the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Flow with the Spirit. Just flow. God says, pray for that person. Pray. He says, invite that person to church. I want to change their lives. You are reasoning. Stop reasoning. Jump. God says, jump. You jump. He says, shout now. You shout. Sound dynamic. Around Jericho, it was just sound. They did not even, you just say, when you hear the final voice, he says, shout. And that's what it is. And Jericho came crumbling now. I've had to pray for people and I had the Lord declare and I always say what the Lord said and it happened. You see, there's something called virtue and by virtue I don't mean character or moral excellence which is, can be what virtue means in scriptures. By virtue I mean God's mighty power. In the King James Version if you read Mark chapter 5 verse 30 um, the Bible says virtue talks about power, miraculous energy or influence. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power, this is the revised version, New King James. The King James says that virtue had gone out of him. Turned around in the crowd. What did he see that went out? Miraculous energy. Virtue. Miraculous energy. Influence had gone out of him. It's also what he said in Luke 6, 19. Virtue gone out of him. People were around Jesus. They were used to him. But a woman came and touched. And virtue was released. Virtue was released. Listen. Virtue flows by demand. What did I say? I want to show I want to close. I want to show practical something here. looking for two spiritual people. So they will not think. Let me pick somebody who will take him. Emmanuel, come. So they will know that it's just random. Amy, come. Because you are writing so well. So they will know that I did not tell you before. Come. I want to show you, you see, what's talking about is supernatural. 
right? Did you get that? Amen. Thank you, ma. My helpmate for life. My permanent honorarium. Glory be to God. No, 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 I'm not touching you. All right. So we sing a song. You know one of the songs? No, 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 I won't sing it now. One of the songs I used to sing. It flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus. And I've told you now that virtue is miraculous energy. Is that not so? Right. So hold him by the hand. Do you know when I say virtue flows out of the virtue? That's miraculous energy. Do you believe there's power in the name of Jesus? Do you believe there are things in his life that need to be fixed? Do you believe so? Do you believe so? Can you provoke the virtue of Jesus to release the name? So, sound dynamics. You know, we are just saying the things I've thought now. Sound dynamics, right? Um, faith, right? In the heart. Um, what does that tell you? Believe, speak. That's release your faith. What does that say? No, that's release your faith. All of that is to release your faith. Look at your man. Insist on it, right? So you want to insist that certain things change. Okay, what does that say? Eh? Compassion. That. So what is lacking in his life because of what he does not have? So you first of all must enter that thing. Some people are sick, and because of they are sick, there are activities they cannot do. And their marriage cannot even work well. That brings you to the place of compassion. Is that not so? So what does that give you? Uh, deep desire, hunger. Right. So mix together, right? Sweet that. You are going to go first. You're going to go first, and you're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your virtue flow into him and release him to the fullness of all that you have asked of. Sound dynamic. It's not in your heart. Don't think it, baby. Call it for, baby. One, two, three, go. Boldness. Calm down. You know, if you pray this way, that's why things don't happen in our lives. And that's how we pray most times. We say it like we are not sure. That's different between your pastor and yourself. It's the boldness. Just say it. Say it like you are on high or something. Say it. It's not you that does it. It's not you that makes it come to pass. There is, yours is to speak. His is to do. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. And it didn't say you shall recover them. He said, and they shall recover. So who does the recovery is Jesus. My own is to speak. You get what I'm saying now? But if I don't speak, I don't uh, release angels. The Bible declares that angels are ministers who are sent to minister for the saints who are hearers of salvation. There are angels that do the works of God. When I speak, angels are released. Let your virtue, virtue, miraculous energy. If you don't know it as virtue, say miraculous energy. Let it flow in you now and complete you. That's all. You get it now. It's not good. You are not paying for practicals, but that's practical, baby. I want to hear you. you obey the spirit. You felt like putting your hands on him. Why didn't you do it? Next time. There's no overdue. You can lay your hands on your husband. Being the head of the family does not mean you should be sick. Are you following what I'm saying? Not permitted. Being the head of the family should not mean you should be poor. It's not, you can't lay hands on me. I'm your husband. No! 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 Put it up! Because you see what happened here is because we live in a patriarchy society. If she was the man and felt comfortable, she would have put the hands. But ah, a woman. You see, that thing affects you in a way. There is no gender in the realm of the spirit. In the sense of the spirit, it's the same. 
Patrick. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Alan. Alan, we are, this is an only convocation. Only convocation. One, two, three, go. Basically, when you, she prayed for you, did you feel anything? You felt something? Even if you say you did not feel, we will feel something. Did you, did you understand that I'm not? When you prayed, when he prayed for you, did you feel anything? Why were you holding her? See, they always be like demonstration. Let them fall. You are trying to catch her. Let go, she If it is in the falling, Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This is the school of the supernatural. When you do it, Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to storm. He spoke to things. And it became so. Bring your hand. Both of you. Bring your hand. Your hand. Just sing. You know the song now. It flows, it flows, it flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows, it flows. <laughs> it Father, flows, in the name of Jesus, let your flows, virtue be released into them. It flows, no. it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it, it flows, flows, it flows. Now, now, what, what we are talking about, you know why hunger, desire, and reason of use? You know Ronaldo plays better because of experience. People mess up big matches, if you're a football fan. Big matches because they're afraid. But when Ronaldo is playing it again, he knows it's the World Cup. Messi will play better in the final. Why? Because he's been doing it. Why it flows better with me is because I've been doing it for a while. Somebody get what we're saying here. What do I call virtue? Miraculous energy. Miraculous energy. Miraculous energy. Do you get what we're saying? Do you get what we're saying? The supernatural is real. Do you get what we're saying? So what we're going to do, what we're going to do as we close, amen. Are you sure you can stand? I'm not talking to you. Are you sure you can stand? If you cannot, you better lie down. So I don't disgrace yourself. Amen. This one is not disgrace, but if you fall on my keyboard, you'll be. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You want some? Jesus has it. Jesus has it. Jesus has it. Jesus has it. Can you stand on your feet, people of God? Hold the person by your side. If you are married, if you are family members, if it's just family of ransom, you know the person. We just want to pray a simple prayer right now. We want to pray a simple prayer right now. Some of you are already trembling in the power of the Lord. So heavy, it's a glory realm. It's a glory realm. The glory. Pass if the person you are holding is not so serious, you can leave the person and stay alone. This moment should not pass you by. This moment should not pass you by. It should not pass you by. Come. I'm just going to sing that song only once. And your prayer is, Lord, let your miraculous energy perfect this person. Let your miraculous energy complete this person. Let your virtue, let it perfect this person. Say it with hunger, with desire, insisting on it. Say it with hunger, insisting on it. Yes, Lord. Get ready. I'll sing once. Don't sing with me. I'll sing only once. And then I will say, pray that prayer. 
and I want you to declare it. Some of you came here today and you probably did not want to come or something. God just brought you here for this time. Hallelujah. It flows. It flows. It flows. It flows. The virtue of Jesus. It flows. It flows. Whether online or on site, can you pray that prayer for that person right now? Now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Complete healing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let it flow. The energy of God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands up and just worship Him. Worship Him. Thank Him for the nuggets. Thank Him for wisdom. Thank Him for the change. I will never be the same again. I will never return. I've shut the door. I walk the path. I run the race. And I will never be the same again. More like fire, so like rain. Born like mighty waters again and again. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you praise for the mightiness of your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and amen. Amen.